Yo, what's good, y'all? Y'all see me on the crispy camera. Probably too crispy. You probably can see all the marks on my face. That's why they call me J Damage, by the way. The reason why they call me J Damage is because my skin is damaged. But anyways, like I said, um, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today is um, logo designs. So I'm not the king of logo designs and I don't have like some like super knowledge like you know I'm basically just gonna tell you guys things that I know from what I experienced I can't really give you you know any like uh, I guess things that you know things that I don't fully have knowledge on I'll just give you guys the information that I, that I have knowledge on so um Basically, a lot of y'all have been purchasing logos that aren't actually logos. Well, they are logos, but at the same time, they're basically just pictures. So basically, what's going on is y'all are, designers are contacting you like, you know, hey, you want to buy a logo? Most of the time, those people are scams anyway. So if a person is inboxing you, asking you, hey, uh, you want to purchase a logo, whatever, whatever, you should automatically be suspicious. You should be like, okay, who is this person and, you know, what are they coming from? But once you do your research and you end up, you know, trusting the person and whatnot, uh, you know, the first thing you want to be doing, you know, once you get in a logo design is, you know, giving that person the description. For some weird reason, a lot of times when y'all purchase logos, y'all not actually giving the person the description of how you want it to look. Before you even get to the point of purchasing a logo design, make sure you already kind of have in your mind what type of logo you want to have. See, if you approach these people and you don't necessarily know how you want your logo to look, everything is kind of up in the air. So you kind of at risk of like, you know what I'm saying, getting any type of logo design. So I would say, you know, first thing you want to do is just make sure you have the proper description of how you want your stuff to look. Make sure you got the proper description, the proper name. Make sure you send them exactly how the name is supposed to be spelled. You know, what color coordination. Make sure you give them a good, detailed description. And that's one of the first steps of basically getting the best logo possible. But this is the crazy part about it. So once you go ahead and send them the description, you know, to get the logo done, what a lot of y'all are not doing is keeping up correctly. I mean, keeping up with the correct files that you need for the logo design. So look. Once you go ahead and send the description, you know, they go ahead and put the logo together. Once they send the logo to you and you like the way it looks and it's time for them to send the logo to you, this is what I need you to do. And I need you to pay attention right now. Tell them that you need the logo in a vector file, a transparent version, and a JPEG picture version. These are the three versions that are key to, you know, having a real logo design. A lot of times the logo designs that y'all getting, I'm not saying that they're fake because damn near any design could be vectorized and turned into a transparent file. But at the same time, a lot of y'all, a lot of designers are contacting y'all, selling y'all a logo, just giving you a picture of it and just leaving. And my main thing is making these designers, you know, holding these designers accountable. Now, in my opinion, like somebody like me, if you wanted to purchase a logo for me and all you wanted was a JPEG file, I don't mind giving you that little JPEG file. I'll give you the JPEG file, but it, I mean, this is the way I move. If somebody contacts me and they say, look, I just want a logo and I just want the JPEG file, I usually don't even charge them that much. It's only because that's me giving you just that solid file without actually giving you your full files that you need for a logo design. Because I could really consider like a JPEG file, that's like me give, just giving you a picture. I'm not actually giving you your files for your logo. And that's the thing, you know, with logo designs. You want to make sure that when you're selling somebody a logo, that you're giving them the, not only are you giving them, you know, the picture file of the logo, you're actually giving them the files for the logo so they can use the logo for different things. See, with, you know, PNG files and, you know, vector files, you know, you need those files for your logo when you want to put your logo on different things. So, like, let's say, for example, like a, a person who just has some like independent t-shirt company, they like, um, you know, I need a transparent version of your logo. So you automatically already have that PNG file that the designer sent you. You could just forward them that email or however the, you know, the designer sent it to you. You can go ahead and just send it to them like that so you don't have to go through that long process. Most companies, if you come to them with just a picture file of your logo with a back with you know a background that has stuff on it, or um, you know it's just an all white or all black background, they usually charge you to chop it out. Like they're like, okay, well we gotta crop this picture out, so they could charge you any damn thing. You know, no telling like how much a a company would charge you. 
So it's it's a crazy process, but one thing I want y'all to pay attention to, if you do purchase a logo from a designer, make sure you say to them, remember this, make sure you say to them, I need this logo, I need the picture version of it, a picture version with a, with a, a solid background, like either solid black or solid white background, then what you want to do is get a PNG version, which is a transparent, that's your logo with a transparent background. And then after the PNG version, what you want to do is ask for a vector version, which that's a, a SVG, a EPS or an AI file, you know, uh, et cetera. You get one of those files uh, also, and you basically, those are the three key files that you need. Now, depending on where you get it printed at, you might need like, you know, some extra, you know, different files for wherever you're getting it printed at. But I'm talking about like as a basic standard, if you're buying a logo design, these are the files you need. So remember what I said, I'm going to say it again, because I know I probably said it a thousand times now. So look, you need a JPEG file, a PNG tra uh, transparent file, and you also need a vector file. Those are the three key files that you need to be getting once you receive your logo design. And if a person isn't able to provide you uh, all of those, you know, key elements of, you know, purchasing a logo design, I would suggest you either go to somebody else or once that person sells you that logo, find somebody else who can convert that logo into those type of files because those files are very important when you plan on doing things with your logo design. I mean, when you first purchase your logo, let's say you may get it, you may just want to post it, you may just want it as a picture so you can post it for people just to show it to them. But eventually, if you plan on doing things with that logo, like far as purchasing merchandise, and putting putting your logo onto things, you are gonna need that transparent PNG file and that vector file. Okay, so I appreciate y'all for checking. That got me tired, <laughs> but um, I appreciate y'all checking out this video. I appreciate y'all coming to this page, and um, I'll make sure I post some more content. Like I said, I'm not all knowing or anything, but the knowledge that I am giving y'all is accurate. Everything that I'm saying to you right now, you can go look this up and you can find out that everything I'm saying to you is accurate. So uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.